Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic, looking at what is a swelled set. Now, transitive sets, we learned about in the last video, are those where a set has as its members also all of the members of its members. A swelled set, on the other hand, is a set which has as its members all of the subclasses of its members as well. If a set is transitive, all of its members are subsets of itself. If a set is swelled, on the other hand, all of the subsets of its elements are also elements themselves. Note this can apply to sets and classes if I call it a swelled class or a swelled set. Doesn't have any effect on its definition. Now, this is a bit complicated, so we'll look at examples in a moment, but first a quick note. The null set is a subset of all sets. We may have mentioned this already, we're going to prove it later, but for now it's important because we're going to be looking at finding the subsets, all of the subsets of all of the members of a particular set. To do that, all of them must have the null set. So in order to be swelled, you must contain the null set. Because any of your members have as a subset the null set. And to be swelled, you must contain all the subsets of all of your members. Hopefully that makes sense. For now, it's important to be aware of since a set must contain the null set as one of its members to be swelled, since the null set will always be one of its subsets. All right, swelled and not swelled. Let's look at some examples. So we have a list here. As with transitive, if you want to pause right now and give these a try on your own, I would highly recommend it. But I'm going to walk through them one by one. If you want to pause halfway through and try it, let me show you half of them and try half of them on your own. That's fine, too. So we've defined explicitly all of these different sets. And the zero with a slash through is just the null set or the empty set. All right? Now, in order to make this a bit easier, we'll also look at the subsets of each of the sets. So let's start with A. So the members of A are B, C, D, and the null set. So for something to be swelled, it must contain all of the subsets of all of its members. So its first member is B. So what are all the subsets of B? Well, the subsets of B are the null set and the set whose only member is C. Well, A contains the set whose only member is C because A can contains B. Not because A contains C, because A contains B. B is equal to the set his only member is C. B has two subsets. A contains both of them. A contains both the null set and B itself. So, so far so good. The first element, A contains all the subsets of B. What are all the subsets of C? The subsets of C are the null set and the set whose only member is A. Now, a clearly contains the null set, but what about the set whose only member is A? A doesn't contain itself, but that's not what we're asking here. The set whose only member is A is defined as C, and C is contained in A. So, A contains the set whose only member is A, even if it doesn't contain A, as well as the null set, so it contains all of the subsets of C. Now, what about D? D is the null set and the set whose only member is E. Well, once again, A clearly contains the null set. But what about the other subset of D, which is the set whose only member is E? We don't see any E's up there in the first line with A, but it doesn't matter because the set whose only member is E is defined as D, and A contains D. We're not looking for E itself, we're looking for the set of E. And the set of E just is D, and A contains D. So A contains all of those. Now, you might ask, what about the null set? Well, here's the question. What are the subsets or the subclasses of the null set? Think about it for a second. To be a subclass, you have to contain, you, your members have to only be members of the class you're a subclass of. So the only class 
which is a subclass of the null class, or the null set, is the null set itself. The empty set is the only set subset of the empty set, because there's no other sets which contain only members of the empty set. They're all identical to the empty set, because the only thing that can do that is a set that has no members. And A contains the null set. So A is swelled. So that's the null set, and the all the subsets of the null set is just the null set. So A is swelled. What about B? B contains as a member C. Now, we just looked at the subsets of C. The subsets of C are the null set and the set of A. Well, B contains the subset of A, or the set only containing A. So the subsets of C are the null sets and the set only containing A. B contains the set only containing A because it contains C, and that's what C is identical to. But B doesn't contain the null set. So it's going to not be swelled. Something similar will apply for both C and D. Both C and D do not contain the null set, and so they can't be swelled, right? C contains A. Now, A has a lot of subsets. And C definitely doesn't contain all of them. But the simple way to look at that is C does not contain the null set, and the null set's a subset of all sets. So if C doesn't contain the null set, C can't be swelled. What about D? Once again, it doesn't contain the null set, so it's probably not going to pass muster. But let's look at all these subsets of E. E has the null set, the set of just C, the set of the null set, and the set of C and the null set. Well, D definitely doesn't contain all of those. It contains the last one only. So D is not going to be swelled. All right, let's keep looking. E contains, as its members, C and the null set. Looking back, the subsets of C are the null set and the set only including A, which is identical to C. E contains both the null set and the set which only includes A, also identical to C. So E is going to be swelled. Now, F contains as its members E and the null set. F does not, however, contain all the subsets of E. Let's look at the subsets of E. So the first subset of E is the null set. F contains that. Check. So far, so good. The last subset of E is the set of C and the null set, which is just defined as E. F contains that one, too. So that's good. But F does not contain the set of just C, or the set of the null set. Because it doesn't contain those, and those are subsets of one of its members, it is not swelled. What about G? G has as members B, E, the set of the null set, and the null set. Well, let's look at B first. Does G contain all of the subsets of B? Well, it contains the null set, so that's good. And it contains the set whose only member is C, which is just identical to B because it contains B. So that's set. Check on the B. What about E? G contains the null set, which is a subset of E. It contains the last subset of E, which is C and the, the set of C and the null set, which is just identical to E. It contains the set of just the null set, the set of the null set. That's its third member of G. But what about the set of C? Does G contain that? Well, actually, it does. Because the other thing that we've said we're going to call the set containing only C is B. And G contains B. So G contains all of the subsets of E. Now what about the set of the null set? Let's look. Well, the only sub sets of the set of the null set are the null set itself and the set of the null set, because everything's a subset of itself. G contains both of those, so it's fine. And of course, G contains the null set, which is just a set of itself, or which whose only subset is itself. And so G is going to pass muster and be swelled. Whew. All right, let's take a look at H. Now, H contains B. 
In order to have B in there and be swelled, you need to have the null set, and you need to have the set whose only member is C, also known as B. So B is fine. Checks out. D. H also has D. D, in order to have D in there and be swelled, you need to have the null set, and the set whose only member is E, also known as D. Both of those are present in H, so D checks out. H also has E. In order to have E in there and be swelled, you need to have the null set. Check. You need to have the set whose only member is C, also known as B, which is a member of H, check. You need to have the set of the null set, check. And you need to have the set whose members are C and the null set, also known as E. E is a member of H, so E checks out. Now, what about F? Let's take a look. What are the subsets of F? F has as subsets the null set, the set only containing E, the set only containing the null set, and the set containing E and the null set. Well, H has the null set as a member. It has the set of the null set as a member. Those are obvious. It has the set containing E and the null set. That's just defined as F, and F is already a member. But what about the set of E? Well, it has that as well, because that's just what we've defined D as. So it has all of the subsets of F as members of H. Moving on to the set of the null set, it has the null set and the set of the null set as members, so that one checks out. And the null set, you always need it to be swelled, and once you have it, that one's going to check out because it has as its only qualification having itself in there. So H will be swelled. Whew! That was a lot of work. Hopefully those examples helped you out in walking through them, helped you out in figuring out what a swelled set really is and what a swelled set is not, or a swelled class really is or a swelled class is not. Most people don't call, call them swollen. I call them swollen just for fun. They're swelled sets. With all that in mind, let's look at the official definition of swollen. A class A is swollen, or really swelled, if for all X and all Y, if X is a subclass of Y, and Y is a member of A, then X is a member of A. Or if S stands for swollen or swelled, for all A, A is swelled, equals, by definition, for all x and all y, x is a subclass of y, and y is a member of a implies that x is a member of a. You'll notice that this is very similar to transitivity with just a couple small changes of a membership to a subclass. This will be definition swell in proofs. Whew. Up next, we're going to look at what a supercomplete set is, doing all sorts of properties of sets and classes today or this week, rather, because this will come out tomorrow. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. Watch a new video every single day for the whole month of October, and stay skeptical, everybody.